Hello and welcome to another update. In this one, I'll be covering the Donetsk and Bakhmut fronts. So starting out in the Donetsk front, the Russian forces are continuing their attacks in the direction of Novomikhailivka and Merinka as they try to continue their advances within the villages. To the north around Novelske as well as Pervomaiske and Vodian, the fighting is also continuing as the Russians are continuing their attempts at advancing within the Donetsk front. They're also continuing their attacks in the direction of Kamyanka as they try to cut off the highway between Evdivka and Donetsk. As for the Bakhmut front, we see that to the south, the Russian forces are continuing their attacks in the direction of Bilahora and Dilivka as they have as they've recently countered a Ukrainian offensive against Kordyumivka and are now taking advantage of that situation to attack in the direction of Bilahora. As for the Klaschivka direction, they are continuing their attempts to enter the village as they continue to expand their control of the locations north of Klaschivka and they've managed to completely capture Pitne and are now fighting within the very outskirts of Bakhmut to the south. Further north in the direction of the east of Bakhmut, we see that the Russians are continuing their attacks in the direction of Bakhmut itself, as well as to the north of it, to the northern residential areas. As for the Solodar area, the Russian forces are continuing their attacks to the east as well as to the south of Solodar, and are continuing their attacks in Bakhmutske as they attempt to take control over the village. And finally, in the direction of Siversk, the Russian forces are continuing their attacks in the direction of Rostovlivka, Vesele, and now also from Bilohorivka towards Vayemka. And finally, Spirne as well. That's the update, and now I'll be looking to analyze the Bakhmut front from a topographic elevation point of view, as well as the surrounding areas. By looking at this map, we can see that there are two main points. The first one is this area here in the center. That is a valley, which Bakhmut is situated in, as well as Solodar in a valley that congests with this main valley. As we can see from this, Bakhmut itself is situated within that valley, and there is a low elevation of the city. And to the northeast and the direction of Petorodne, we see that there is some hills to the northeast as well as the south, which is the areas in which the Russian forces are in control of. They are advancing to the northeast of Petorodne as well as the southwest. This is to cut off the main entrance to Petorodne as well as getting the high ground that oversees the valley in, within Bakhmut. At the same time, they're advancing to the west of the highway and this is also the high grounds, as we can see here, as they try to enter the residential areas to the northeast of Bakhmut. These are the main hills that oversees the city of Bakhmut from the east. And finally, to the southeast, we see that most of this ground is actually on the lower side, specifically Uputne and Ivanrad. As we can see, the general elevation here is 120 meters compared to the east, which is around 190 meters. And then there's the Bakhmut itself, which is around 90 meters. With this, we can see that the Russian forces which are advancing through the Opitna area are actually within the valley and are trying to advance within the valley towards Bakhmut. What we see here is the river line and to the west, this is the canal. And we can see in the direction of Klishchivka that the Russian forces are also advancing by the canal and keeping to the eastern side of it as they advance in the direction of Bakhmut. Well, this also explains why it is difficult for the Russians to advance into Klishchivka as there is the canal separating the two sides of Klishchivka and the Russian positions. As for the western side where the highway towards Bakhmut is situated, we can see that it is placed on a high ground which is at a height of about 200 meters compared to the east of canal which is about 140 meters. So there's about 60 meters difference between the east and the west of the canal. This shows that it is difficult for the Russians to cut off this road as the Ukrainians have a high ground position within it. Also, to the south of Bakhmut, we see that the Russians are on the right side of the canal, which means that the Ukrainians have the high ground in this area, which would explain why they have a difficulty trying to go to the west, and they are only focusing their advances towards uh, Klishchivka, but there was also the reports that they were trying to advance from the south, and as we can see from the south, they have crossed the canal and they are on the western side, which is the high ground in this case. 
So we see that the Russian forces are actually trying to advance within the high grounds towards the north, and at the same time they're trying to enter towards Klitschivka from the northeastern side where both sides are on the lower ground. So they're exposing themselves to the fire from the west while getting a better overview of the Klitschivka area from the northeast. But at the same time they're advancing from the west to try and counteract the Ukrainian advantage by staying on the high ground. As for the Solodar front, there are two important points to notice here. The first one is the Yakolivka area. As we can see here, the Russians recently captured this and they are now advancing in the direction of the Sele as well as, as well as this village here, which we can see from this perspective is they are both on the low ground while the Yakolivka area is on the high ground. We are seeing the Russian forces advancing towards northeast in the direction of Vesele, which leaves them with the high ground as they have the advantage here. And from the northern side, we see them advancing through the valley, which means that they are on a leveled field. But at the same time, we see them in the direction of Solidar advancing through the hills and trying to advance from this high ground to the north and the east of Solidar. This will give them the advantage of the high ground in this direction and at the same time they're advancing through Bakhmutske, which is all within the valley. And we can also see that the canal is actually also going th through Solodar and Bakhmutske, which splits it into two. So even if the Russians managed to capture Bakhmutske, they still wouldn't have an advantage when it comes to advancing further into Solodar. The, the main Russian thrust into Solodar will come from the Yakolivka area as they try to outflank their Ukrainian positions in Solodar and advance from the higher ground. And that is my topographic analysis of the Bakhmut and Siversk front. From this, we can discern that the main axis of attack from the Russian forces will be to the west from Yakovlivka towards Solodar as a main thrust into the city as they try to capture the eastern part of the canal as well as the higher ground within the city itself from the highest ground which is outside the city and to the south from Klaschivka, where they try to advance to the north towards Ivanivske, as they are as they are advancing from the high ground towards the north, and finally from Pitorotne towards the center of Bakhmut, as well as towards Krasnahora from the east, as they keep their high ground and try to advance from these positions, and at the same time cut off the main roads to Bakhmut as they try to encircle it. While at the same time we see that the at attacks from the southeast of Bakhmut are most likely just to keep their Ukrainian forces there as they attack them from the higher positions to the east of Bakhmut with artillery as they have the higher ground and a better overview over the city itself. And at the same time we see them advancing in the direction of Vayimka, Spirinus, Vesele and Rostolivka. All of these are in less significant areas where there isn't a lot of advantage to taking this area other than getting a buffer zone between the highway and the Russian positions. That's it for this video. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.